Today we are going to study about torque and torque speed characteristics of an induction, three phase induction motor. Okay, so what is actually torque? Torque is a rotational force produced on the uh, induction motor. So the torque developed is denoted as capital T and it is defined as the torque generated or rotational force due to mechanical power developed by electromechanical power conversion process in the motor. We know that the induction motor, the uh, electrical input is taken by that motor and which converts through electromagnetic domain into mechanical domain. That means the output is mechanical domain, uh, mechanical energy. So that electromechanical conversion during the electromechanical power conversion process, there will be a rotational force generated that is known as torque. Okay. And the torque is denoted by T and the gross torque. We will write the equation for gross torque. Gross torque due to rotor input power PR. There will be a rotor input power PR. Gross torque can be written. Uh, represented as PR by omega. Omega is that is at synchronous speed. What uh, angular velocity is denoted as omega s and rotor power is PR. Then gross torque is that power divided by angular velocity. And we can write it as PR by omega s is 2 pi n by 60. That is here it is synchronous speed 2 pi n x by 60 okay so rotor power divided by 2 pi n x by 60 we will take the synchronous speed for getting gross torque okay because the rotor in uh, rotational uh, frequency is uh, st uh, same as that our input frequency so we will take the synchronous speed as the input speed and when the motors are standing and the gross torque due to rotor output power and the gross torque can be produced due to output power on the shaft that is equal to mechanical power Pm and which is denoted as the out output of the rotor that is Pm mechanical power and we can denote it as a torque by torque is equal to mechanical power divided by omega s. So we can write this equation. At this time the motor is rotating at a speed which is below synchronous speed. So you have to consider the rotor speed now. Pm motor power divided by 2 pi n by 60. That is the only difference in gross torque due to rotor input. If you are considering rotor input, there is a state rotational field produced which is at, uh, at a speed nf. So you are considering nf here. When the gross torque is considered at a as a mechanical power that is rotor output, then you have to consider the speed as rotor speed that is 2 pi n by 60. But the shaft, at the shaft there will be a load, friction and relief losses and the remaining part is the actual output power. So the shaft torque is less than this gross torque. Shaft torque. So actually the shaft torque is equal to actual output power, output power divided by omega, which is not omega s, sorry, omega s is denoted at a synchronous speed and at rotor code we denote angular velocity as omega. So P out by omega, here also output power divided by 2 pi n by 60, by 60, okay. This is the sharp torque and n and n is the rotor speed and n is the synchronous speed both are in RPM. Okay. So this is the torque. Now we are going to consider torque speed characteristics and this power gross torque short torque. It will be more clear uh, when, my, when we are going to study this power flow uh, stages. So at that time you will uh, get the idea of these two powers and the rotor power, mechanical power. Okay. So now you should know the equation for torque as a power divided by omega. Okay. Now we are going to study torque speed 
characteristics of an induction motor so for that we are representing the characteristic curve on a x axis we take speed and here it is torque okay now the characteristics curve we are going to draw the characteristic curve at the stationary remember rotor is stationary so speed is zero at that time we know that in an induction motor in a three phase induction motor we are uh, when we give a supply to the stator it will produce a rotating magnetic field on the stator stator pole and that rotating magnet, uh, magnetic field will produce a magnetic pull on the rotor that is there will be a starting torque at this so at the speed is zero there will be a torque so torque is not zero at this point so the characteristic curve starts from at a point like here and the curve is just drooping then increasing to and it is a smooth curve then it reaches a maximum and we denote this is our synchronous speed ns this is our synchronous speed ns so the curve now smoothly goes like this okay so this is our top speed characteristics and this is our synchronous speed we know that at synchronous speed what happens the torque becomes zero why that is when the rotor and the magnetic field both are run synchronized that means both are running n n that is speed of motor and ns become same then what happens there is no rate of change of flux so if there is no rate of change of flux means there is no induced dmf and the motor will stop so at the synchronous speed torque becomes zero but at starting time when the speed is zero there will be a magnetic pull uh, of torque so it will not zero it starts from a particular point then after that it increases and this torque is um, this torque value which is known as starting torque we represent it as p start starting torque or it is also known as locked rotor locked rotor torque locked torque or block rotor torque block rotor torque or locked rotor torque or starting torque we call this as at this point and this is another important point that is known as that is the maximum torque produced here you can see this is our maximum power and the maximum torque produced here this maximum torque which is denoted as t max and this torque is known as breakdown torque breakdown torque breakdown torque and a torque which is below it a lowest value here this point is known as pull down torque pull down torque so you should remember these Uh, point that here the torque speed characteristics will be like this at a synchronous speed the torque is zero and this is the maximum torque point and that maximum torque is known as breakdown torque when we increase the torque or when we increase the speed above this value what happens when we increase uh, the speed at which maximum torque is this n and when we increase the speed above this value that means the motor torque will be dropping and it becomes zero when it reaches synchronous speed okay now i will explain it in detail again torque speed characteristics So the curve, curve is like this. Okay. So this is our 
synchron speed n okay now this is our maximum torque pm and there will be a requirement a rated load a rated torque requirement for a particular load so let us assume this will be our rate uh, load requirement for a particular load so we will first separate this curve into two that means we are considering two zones this zone is known as unstable zone or transient zone so unstable zone unstable and this zone is known as above this maximum curve it is known as stable zone okay stable zone because the operating zone is this this side operating zone it is also known as operating zone the motor will run at the motoring operation at this zone so the motor will operate at this zone so from this point to here this is motoring zone or operating zone and this zone is stable and the side which is left to this side is this side is known as unstable zone so this this is why we call at this stage Uh, when the motor is started in uh, at the initial stage itself within moment the stage will occur the, that means this portion will be at the starting time itself it is increases and reaches at this point so it is a transient stage and it becomes stable from here to here okay when the motor starts at the same instant uh, or at the short period of time it reaches at this point okay So this is an unstable zone, and also now we are considering this is our rated load requirement, uh, torque requirement for a rated load. Okay, so this is our load requirement torque. So we consider these two points as our operating point. Now this is the operating point. These two points. Okay, and. Why the motor is operating at this uh, operating zone? We will explain that. Right. So just consider this point. And when we uh, at any some in instant, because of some reason, when the speed increases on the motor, that means when the speed increases from this operating point to here, what happens? torque decreases at this point when the operating point shifts due to uh, here then what happens this will be the speed and this will be our torque okay so we consider two cases this is first case and this is second case okay so at first case when speed in, uh, increases the operating point shifted from this uh, point to here okay then what happens the torque at this operating point is higher than this operating point so torque will be decreased for this first case and when the torque decreases but here the speed increases that means it again the uh, that the increase in speed will cause to increase the torque also so again this will regain the On normal operating point, that is, it goes to here itself. Okay, I'll explain again. From here, this is our N S. Okay, and this is our operating zone from here to here. And just this is the operating point. Okay, so when it changes to here, what happens? First, it comes to this point. At this time. Speed increases as compared to this point. Here the speed is only this much, but here the speed increases. So when the speed increases, the torque starts to increase. So it again regains the stable operation at this operating point itself. 
and when it moves to this due to some disturbances the speed torque increases to this and the operating point shifted to here then what happens when the operating point is shifted to here that means speed decreases here as compared to our normal point so when the speed decreases the torque also tries to decrease so it again regain the stable operating point okay that means so this is our curve and this we are considering this is our operating point operating point on motoring stage so when if there are any changes of this operating point either in this side or this side that means if there is any increase or decrease in torque or speed any change in torque or speed occurs then it will regain its the stable operating point up and back a small time duration then it will regain it that is why called it as stable zone okay namme oru endengil oru disturbance kaana alle endengil oru excitation kaana namme motor onnu excite edu speed increase edu nenga speed increase edu nenjal adane anusarichu torque increase edu torque increase edumbo veendum namme pale operating point lotta na reach edu adhe pole ini pa torque ഇൻക്രീസ് ചെയ്യുന്ന കണ്ടീഷനിൽ സ്പീഡ് എന്താ ചെയ്യുന്നത് ഡിക്രീസ് ചെയ്യാൻ ചെയ്യുന്നത് അപ്പോൾ വീണ്ടും അത് അതേ സ്റ്റേബിൾ പൊസിഷനിലോട്ട് തിരിച്ചെത്താൻ ശ്രമിക്കും സോ ഇൻ ഈ ഒരു റീജിയൻ ഈ റീജിയൻ ഇടയ്ക്ക് വരുന്ന ഓപ്പറേഷൻ അപ്പോഴും സ്റ്റേബിൾ ആയിരിക്കും ബട്ട് ഹിയർ വി ടോൾഡ് ഇറ്റ് ആസ് അൺസ്റ്റേബിൾ സൺ വൈ ദിസ് ഇസ് അവർ പോയിൻറ്റ് ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് ഓപ്പറേറ്റിംഗ് പോയിൻറ്റ് അതായത് നമ്മളൊരു മോട്ടോറിൽ ഓപ്പറേറ്റിംഗ് പോയിൻ്റ് ആയിട്ട് ഇത് എടുക്കുന്നത് എന്തുകൊണ്ടാണെന്ന് വെച്ചാൽ ജസ്റ്റ് ഒരു മോട്ടറിൽ ഒരു ലോഡ് കൊടുക്കുന്നു ഒരു പെർട്ടിക്കുലർ ലോഡ് കൊടുക്കുന്നു ആ പെർട്ടിക്കുലർ ലോഡിന് ഒരു ഒരു ലോഡ് ടോർക്ക് റിക്വയർമെൻ്റ് ഉണ്ടായിരിക്കും ആ ടോർക്കാണ് റെപ്രസെൻ്റ് ചെയ്തിരിക്കുന്നത് അപ്പോൾ ഈ ടോർക്കിൽ ഈ ക്യാരക്ടറിസ്റ്റിക്സിൽ വരുന്ന രണ്ട് ഓപ്പറേറ്റിംഗ് പോയിൻറ്റ്സ് ആണിത് അപ്പോൾ ഈ ഓപ്പറേറ്റിംഗ് പോയിൻ്റ് എന്തുകൊണ്ടാണ് അൺസ്റ്റേബിൾ എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് നോക്കാം ഓക്കെ സോ ദിസ് ഇസ് അവർ ടോർക്ക് റിക്വയർമെൻറ്റ് സോ അറ്റ് ദിസ് ഓപ്പറേറ്റിംഗ് സോൺ ദിസ് ഇസ് അവർ നോർമൽ ഓപ്പറേറ്റിംഗ് പോയിൻറ്റ് ദെൻ ദ സ്പീഡ് increases the operating point shifted to here so this is a new operating point here what happened at this here you can see this is our speed as compared to this point speed will be increased when speed increases what happens at this stage when the speed increases torque also increasing and from the characteristics you can see the torque also increasing in this characteristics ibada characteristics increasing characteristics are അപ്പോൾ സ്പീഡ് ഇൻക്രീസ് ചെയ്യുന്നതിൻ്റെ കൂടെ ടോർക്ക് ഇൻക്രീസിങ് സോ ദ ഓപ്പറേറ്റിംഗ് പോയിൻറ്റ് ഹാവ് എ ടെൻഡൻസി ടു മൂവ് എവേ ഫ്രം ദ നോർമൽ ഓപ്പറേറ്റിംഗ് പോയിൻറ്റ് ഓക്കെ അത് തിരിച്ച് മൂവ് ചെയ്യാൻ ചെയ്യുക അതായത് കറിവ് ഇങ്ങനെയാണ് വരുന്നത് ഈ ഒരു പൊസിഷനിൽ നിന്ന് അപ്പോൾ ഈ ഒരു ഓപ്പറേറ്റിംഗ് പോയിൻറ്റിൽ നിന്ന് നമ്മൾ ഓപ്പറേറ്റിംഗ് പോയിൻ്റ് ഈ ഒരു ഇതിലോട്ട് ഷിഫ്റ്റ് ചെയ്ത് കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ അതൊരു ഇൻക്രീസിങ് ക്യാരക്ടറിസ്റ്റിക്സ് ആണ് സ്പീഡ് ഇൻക്രീസ് ചെയ്യുന്നതിനനുസരിച്ച് ടോർക്ക് ഇൻക്രീസ് ചെയ്യുകയാണ് ചെയ്യുക സോ ഓപ്പറേറ്റിംഗ് പോയിൻറ്റ് കൂടുതൽ എവേലോ അതായത് കൂടുതൽ ഡിസ്റ്റൻസിലോട്ട് മൂവ് ചെയ്യുക ചെയ്യുക ഇറ്റ് വിൽ നോട്ട് റീഗെയിൻ ഇറ്റ്സ് നോർമൽ ഓപ്പറേറ്റിംഗ് പോയിൻറ്റ് തിരിച്ചു വരില്ല അത് കൂടുതൽ ഡീവിയേറ്റ് ചെയ്ത് പോവാണ് ചെയ്യുക ഇനി ജസ്റ്റ് കൺസിഡർ ഇഫ് ദ ഓപ്പറേറ്റിംഗ് പോയിൻറ്റ് ഷിഫ്റ്റ് ടു ഹിയർ ഇറ്റ് ദ സ്പീഡ് ഡിക്രീസസ് സ്പീഡ് ഓഫ് ദ മോട്ടർ ഡിക്രീസ് ചെയ്ത് ഈ ഒരു പോയിൻ്റ് എത്തി എന്നായിരിക്കും അപ്പോൾ ഇങ്ങോട്ട് നോക്കാം ഇവിടെ എന്താണ് ടോർക്കും ഡിക്രീസിങ് ആണ് സോ ദ ക്യാരക്ടറിസ്റ്റിക്സ് വിൽ ട്രൈ ടു ഫുൾ ഡൗൺ ഹിയർ തിരിച്ച് ഇങ്ങോട്ട് എവേ ആയിട്ട് പോവാണ് ചെയ്യുക ക്യാരക്ടറിസ്റ്റിക്സ് അതായത് സ്പീഡ് ഡിക്രീസ് ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ ടോർക്ക് ഇവിടെ ഡിക്രീസിങ് ആണ് സോ ഇറ്റ് വിൽ മൂ എവേ ഫ്രം ദ നോർമൽ ഓപ്പറേറ്റിംഗ് ഫോം സോ ഇറ്റ് വിൽ നോട്ട് റീഗെയിൻ ദിസ് എഗെയിൻ ഓക്കെ സോ വി കോൾ ദിസ് സോൺ ആസ് അൺസ്റ്റേബിൾ സോൺ സോ ഫോർ എ ടോർക്ക് സ്പീഡ് ക്യാരക്ടറിസ്റ്റിക്സ് ദർ ആർ ടു സോൺസ് സ്റ്റേബിൾ സോൺ ആൻഡ് അൺസ്റ്റേബിൾ സോൺ സോ ദ മോട്ടോറിംഗ് ഓപ്പറേഷൻ ഇസ് ഒക്കറിംഗ് അറ്റ് this stage okay here to here then next we can represent it as a torque slip characteristic also slip 
to get. So we can now press on the top click characteristics. This is click and this one sort. What will be the slip but um, our stationary condition? You know that at standstill or stationary condition. Topic. Okay. At a standstill or stationary condition, S is equal to 1 mark. Okay. Yeah. S is equal to 1. So when S is equal to 1, we know that there is a top character. Characteristics is similar to top still characteristics. And, uh, so, um, no six. At S is equal to say um, 1 here and at this point at the synchronous speed water slip S is equal to 0 because N is at the synchronous speed the motor is also running at the synchronous uh, that means when it reaches at this point both speed become same so N is minus N become 0 so at this point slip is equal to 0 ok so the curve will be like this we can represent it as a top slip carry out. Okay. Then before that we can represent uh, we know that in a uh, slipping induction motor we know that in a slipping induction motor there are a uh, possibility to increase the resistance of the rotor. That means at, uh, in a slipping induction motor there are pressures and the outer terminus can be taken so we can connect external resistance to the three phase induction slipping induction motor and also for squirrel cage induction motor we, we can change the resistance of squirrel cage motor bar. So um, it also depends on the torque and speed. So that resistance of rotor circuit will have a relationship with the torque speed characteristic. So let us if water when the resistance changes what happens on um, our characteristic so we will represent the stock speed, speed characteristics in related with the resistance so the normal characteristics will be This is our speed and torque. Okay. So this is our normal characteristics with the res rotor resistance R. Taking this one as R1. Okay. Then when we increase the resistance R2 is greater than R1. Then take another characteristics with the resistance R2. That means we are increasing the resistance of rotor circuit. Then what happen on the characteristics? The characteristics will be on which the starting torque will be increases and the maximum torque will attain at the lower starting. Okay. So the characteristics will be like this. So this is our second characteristic for here you can see what are the changes occurred on this curve that is for R2. R2 is greater than R1. Here you can see the torque increases. Starting torque increases. And the, uh, here this one is the starting torque. Here at this point it is increases. Then what happens? The maximum torque uh, attained will be at a speed lower than as compared to the first case n2 is lower than n1 so and also we can see the motoring zone or stable zone or region of st 
stable zone is increased when the rot resistance is increased. Motoring zone or stable zone will be increased. Operating area will be increased. Okay. For when we consider an R3 which is greater than R2 and R1, then what will be the curve? Just as okay, we like this. Again, the starting torque increases and it attains, and its operating area also increases. Okay, so here you can see operating area increases, but here you can see the speed will be decreased for increasing the resistance. So we cannot increase the resistance of rotor circuit as, as much. So uh, otherwise the motor will pull down also. So we have to uh, we have to consider the speed also. Speed again. So when we increase the resistance above a particular value that will affect the motor operation. Okay. And also what happens? So operating zone increases. Operating zone increases, starting torque increases, speed decreases and also efficiency of the motor also affected due to this decrease in speed, so it also decreases. So when the rotor resistance increases, these are the advantages, starting torque can be increased, operating area can be increased and the efficiency will be less. And also another thing we are going to study is so uh, active power flow through a motor. We will consider active power flow. So I will explain again before that. So we done another top speed characteristics we are another top speed characteristics like if you work and work on this point is the starting torque. This is the starting torque. This is the starting time. That is the stationary time. Then this is the synchronous speed. At the synchronous speed, the motor will run. Because the rotor is synchronous speed. The engineer speed is the same constant speed. The same speed is the rate of change of flux. That is the relative velocity. One speed will rotate in the other. Flux from rotor from one speed will rotate in the other. EM of induce ALA. So, the motor will stop at this point. Okay. And this is the maximum torque. And there are two area of zones. One first side is unstable zone. And another one is stable zone. Great. Then, now I will explain active power flow through a motor. We have power stages. DC motor लगा पाने बोलते हैं power stage तो हम three phase induction motor first we know that we are giving electrical input to the motor so our input to the motor is first we are giving to the state so first we represent the state so this is the state Okay, so in this data we have to supply the electrical power to the winding of data induction motor winding and which is converted into mechanical power through a magnetic domain that is electrical domain is converted to magnetic domain then to mechanical domain. Okay, so a part of the stator power input we take it as P1. This is our power P1 and which goes, a part of the stator input power goes to supply stator losses. What are the stator losses? One loss here. There are two losses. One is copper. There are stator winding. So the first loss is copper losses. That is I square R losses. That the stator winding have some resistance, so there will be I square R loss, and there will be some 
core law core law we have studied in the transformers also that is if there is a eddy current loss the same as in the stator of the induction motor there will be some core losses okay so stator core loss and stator cocker loss will be there a part of input will go to supply these two losses and the remaining part and the remaining part goes to rotor that input to the rotor is denoted as p2 or pr we always represent it as p2 or pr okay this is rotor okay so in the rotor there will be some loss in the rotor winding also that is rotor copper loss and the uh, the supply frequency will be higher as compared to the rotor frequency which is very less so there will be core losses negligible okay so in the rotor there will be rotor copper loss so rotor power input minus rotor copper loss will be the output to output of the rotor to the shaft that is known as mechanical power so the remaining part which goes to the shaft is denoted as pm mechanical power since the frequency of rotor current is very low the rotor core loss is very small so we are neglecting other rotor core loss a part of mechanical power developed is both at this here we can consider the shaft the shaft and here one part goes to supply and friction losses friction and windage losses so this is friction and windage losses then the remaining part of this power will be our net mechanical output power net mechanical output power output power okay so we are giving an electrical power to the stator winding of an induction motor and which is converted here yeah, we are giving and that is converted into mechanical power output at the shaft and a part of stator input is goes to supply stator losses and that is stator core loss and stator copper loss and the remaining is transferred across air gap stator and rotor will have an air gap and that air uh, through that a magnetic flux is coupled to the rotor so there in this is a voltage and it produces a rotor input power p2 and the rotor have some uh, winding so there will be i square r losses so there will be copper loss so rotor input power minus that copper loss will be the output of rotor that is converted to mechanical power that is the developed mechanical power on the rotor and since the frequency of rotor current is low rotor core losses we are neglecting and the part of mechanical power developed goes to friction and windage losses and the remaining is the power output okay now what will be the stator input stator input power we represent it as p1 actually it's a three phase supply so we represent the three phase power equation as root 3 v1 i1 cos phi phi and we can represent the rotor input input power as p2 that is represented as a me mechanical power so we represent it as p uh, in terms of torque that is 2 pi n h by 
टी इंटू टी दैट इज टू पाई इन दिफ्टी टी सो दिस इज इन वॉट एंड मेकानिकल पवर मेकानिकल पवर डेवलप्ड इज डेवलप्ड इज पी एम ऑन द रॉक यू कैन सी हियर दिस इज पी एम दिस वन इज पी टू P1 and P2 then Pm. So Pm is equal to here. First case we consider the synchronous first. We but the rotor is ro not rotating at N S. We consider the rotor speed for this equation. 2 pi N torque in torque divided by 60. This is the mechanical power equation in terms of torque and rotor. Rotor. Copper loss is equal to what will be rotor copper loss? We know the input rotor input P two and the mechanical power P M. So difference of these two will give P two minus P M will give you the rotor copper. Alright, but now what? Your rotor the input and the P two are there, right? And output is P M. So this loss is written again there P two minus P M is there, right? Okay. So P2 minus P M will give you the rotor copper loss. Now just substitute the equation for this equation. One two pi N S T by sixty minus two pi N T by sixty. What will be here? You will get N S minus N into two. By t by sixty. Okay. So we can write an another equation. This is the equation for rotor copper loss. Just divide this rotor copper loss by rotor input. Then you will get n s minus n. Here you got n s minus n by two, n into two pi t by two pi t by sixty. Four divided by you have to divide it as by two pi t by sixty into n s. Rotor input is two pi n s t by sixty. So here you can cancel these two and you will get n s minus n by n s, which is our slip of the motor so you can represent the rotor copper loss as loss is equal to s into rotor input so this is the equation for rotor copper loss which is equal to slip into rotor input or we can represent it as s into p2 And the mechanical power developed will be represented as P M, which is equal to what mechanical power equation on the other side. What P M is what I am going to do now. P two minus this loss will give you P M. So rotor copper loss we have got an equation S P two, so we can write P M as P two minus S P two, or will be equal to P two. Rotor power into one minus s. This will be the mechanical power, and the mechanical output power, axial output power P out is equal to P M minus mechanical losses, friction and windage losses. So these equations will be useful for doing some um, problems to find out efficiency. Okay. So you should remember input three phase supply input power is root three v one i one cos phi and the rotor input p two is which is represented in terms of torque two pi n s t by sixty and here you should remember it it should consider synchronous speed so mechanical power is the rotor output so you have to consider the rotor speed two pi n t by sixty and the rotor copper loss is You know that rotor copper loss means you have to get this loss. So input is P two, output is P M. So P two minus P M is the our rotor copper loss. So substitute these two equations here, then you will get 
like this n is minus n by n is for rotor copper loss by rotor input so you can get rotor copper loss can be related with rotor input as se2 then mechanical power the next stage is mechanical power developed on the shaft that is rotor output minus that loss of that sp2 copper loss so p2 into 1 minus s and the actual output power means there is another mechanical losses so just subtract mechanical losses from the mechanic uh, mechanical power then we will get the actual output power okay so now we will get the equation for the shaft torque that is shaft torque is represented i have already told shaft torque is represented as output power by omega because we are taking output power so the actual output power is given at the shaft is p out not p m okay then there is one problem here you can see here i will read it. three phase induction motor has synchronous motor uh, has a speed of 1200 rpm so you have get ns at 1200 rpm and draws 80 kilowatt so first you have to consider the uh, input power supply or p1 or ps is equal to 80 kilowatt supply power is 80 kilowatt and the first you have to consider theta then the output before output there will be some losses losses is i square r loss plus core loss so from the source it draws 80 kilo that is our input and the copper loss and core loss of the stator is 5 kilo so these together it is 5 kilo okay and the remaining part goes to rotor so rotor have what will be the rotor power now you know that input is 80 and losses are 5 kilo then the rotor we have 80 minus 5 that is 75 kilo volt will reach here to the rotor that is p r p r is p rotor or p2 is 75 kilo volt then there will be one i square r loss here that i square r loss can be found out and the motor runs at a speed now is given and find the power flow and efficiency and uh, friction and vintage losses is given so from the rotor you will get a mechanical power pm and there will be a shaft and there will be friction and vintage losses is given as vintage losses is equal to 2 kilo volt and the output is p out okay so first you have to find out what is this copper loss then pm power flow kandu vikkana vanna just you have to know each stage values so first it is given as loss in stator is 5 kilo volt so you have find out the input power p2 to the rotor is 75 kilo volt 80 minus 575 kilo volt and you can find out clip it is given that synchronous speed is 1200 and the motor runs at a speed 1152 so you can find out clip as ns minus nm divided by ns that is 1200 minus 1152 divided by 1200 so you will get 0.04 as the clip and you know that this copper loss can be represented as s p2 p2 is non 75 kilo volt so s p2 is rotor copper loss rotor copper loss is equal to s into p2 p2 is given so 
O n zero four into seventy five kilo volt will give you three kilo volt. So you will get the rotor copper loads as three kilo volt. So you know the load three kilo volt. So this C R. So this C R minus this three kilo volt will give you P M. So P M is equal to seventy five minus three. That is seventy five minus three is equal to seventy two kilo volt here. So P M is P M is seventy two kilo volt. Now, then friction and windage losses is given as two kilo volt. So this seventy two minus two will give you the output seventy two minus two. That is seventy kilo volt. Is our output power. So output power is equal to seventy two minus that frictional losses equal to seventy kilo volt. So you will get each stage power. First, it is given as 80 kilowatt, and uh, iron and copper losses are given 5 kilowatt. So minus it, then you will get this power by finding out slip. You can find out the copper loss, then mechanical power by rotor input minus losses will give you mechanical power. Frictional windage losses is given, so you can find out the output final output power. Now the efficiency. You have to find the efficiency also. Power flow you have find out now you have to find out efficiency. So how can you find out efficiency? You know the output and input of the stator. Then you can find out efficiency as efficiency is equal to output power divided by input power. That is equal to seventy divided by eighty into hundred. That is equal to eighty eight. Almost eighty-eight, seven point five percent or eighty-eight percentage. Okay. Thank you.